tonight on EKB Evening News at 6, remembering the reason for Memorial Day. Good evening, I'm Gary Slum. For many people, Memorial Day is a welcome springtime holiday away from work and represents the start of summer. However, EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins today went searching for the true meaning of the holiday she filed this report. Dozens of Memorial Day ceremonies were held today throughout our region, honoring those who have served our country and remembering those who made the ultimate sacrifice to defend our freedom. In Pike County, the DAV Chapter 166 held a flag dedication ceremony at Annie E. Young Cemetery, where several veterans gathered to remember friends and fellow service men and women they have lost. U.S. Army veteran John Cornett said that many people in the United States take our freedom for granted. People don't know how lucky it is to live in your good old USA. We got freedom. If you're anywhere else, it's not like it is here. So we're the luckiest, we're God's people right here in this country and don't know it. Members of the DAV lowered the old flag and carefully raised the new one to fly over the cemetery. Goebel Burke, a Vietnam veteran, took a few minutes to share some of his experiences during his tour in Vietnam, but he says he does not regret his decision to serve his country. We were called and we went, you know, that's, some didn't, some wanted to leave the country, that's their choice, you know, but as far as me and most of my friends, we went together, you know, and I don't regret it a minute, I'd do it over again, if I were asked to, I would do it over. Fire. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shannon Deskins. Police have few answers right now concerning a woman who was found dead last night on Route 194 in Freeburn. Police were called to the scene following a report of a woman lying in the roadway. Kentucky State Police Trooper Stephen Mount says that once troopers arrived on the scene, they found the body of 30-year-old Hope Fields of Phelps. In the evening hours on Sunday, Post 9 received a 911 call saying that a female was in the roadway uh, in the Freeman community. Our troopers responded to the scene along with EMS personnel and discovered that a female had been struck by a vehicle and was indeed laying in the roadway. Uh, she was later pronounced deceased by Pike County Coroner. Police have not said whether Fields was struck by a car before or after her death. No one has been charged in connection with the incident. Kentucky State Police Detective Gary Sykes is leading that investigation. A weekend wreck has left an Elkhorn City man dead. 24-year-old Jimmy Mullins was driving along US 460 in Regina Saturday night when he lost control of his vehicle and left the roadway. The vehicle overturned in a creek. Kentucky State Police Trooper Stephen Mounts says by the time help arrived, it was already too late. On Saturday, May 23rd, troopers responded to the Regina area on US 460 uh, regarding a single vehicle accident in which a vehicle had left the roadway overturning. As troopers responded to the scene, uh, they noticed the operator inside was unresponsive and was deceased. Mounts added that Mullins was not wearing a seatbelt at the time of the accident. The incident remains under investigation. Like all local governments across Kentucky, Pikeville is currently in the thick of a planning its budget for the upcoming fiscal year, which begins July 1st. EKB News reporter Courtney Lovern went to the City Commission's meeting Friday evening and found that the process has been going smoothly. Last Friday, a special called meeting was held by the Pikeville City Commissioners since their normal meeting would have fallen on the Memorial Day holiday. During the work session, the council discussed the budget and how the money is being managed so far. Well, there was uh, several things today. First of all, we had a work session prior to the meeting uh, for our budget work sessions. Um, one of the things that we do every year is we have a, an announced plan work session to call in the local media as well to sit down with the commission to go over the, bu over the budget for the following year. So we spent the last couple of hours before this meeting sitting down and really working through the budget details uh, so that next month in June we'll do the first reading and the second reading of the budget and have passage of it before the new budget kicks in in July, which we're mandated to do pursuant to Kentucky law. Blackburn said they are expecting a flat budget because their capitals are where they need to be and that their conservative style has helped them save money that can be used for unexpected expenses. Uh, we've got a couple of projects that we're still seeking funding for um, that 
was layered into the budget, but we expect to receive some grant funding to be able to cover those uh, those pieces as well. So uh, overall, another uh, good year, outlook year. A lot of um, all the departments were satisfied with most of the capitals that were approved. Uh, and we expect the uh, first reading to go without any issues uh, so come the first part of June. Reporting for EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Courtney Levern. Rescue crews had a job on their hands Friday night when they were called out to a report of a man pinned by a steamroller. The man was working for Kimberly Paving near Route 195 at the mouth of Wolf Pit Branch when the roller lost traction and ran away downhill. The roller slipped off the roadway and into a house, pinning him between the two. Marabone Volunteer Fire Chief Kleinert Atkins tells us that rescuers worked about 30 minutes to free him and ultimately had to remove a wall from the house in order to get to him. Remarkably, the man suffered no life-threatening injuries. He was taken to the hospital afterwards for treatment of a suspected broken leg. A Boone County, West Virginia man is in jail facing a federal drug charge. 27-year-old Leonel V. Costalos was arrested Thursday evening following a search of his Madison home. Police had observed Costalos entering the home carrying a black backpack prior to their search. Upon entering the house, they found Costellos alone inside and discovered a backpack in his bedroom. Inside the backpack, they found 51 grams of meth. Based on the quantity of the drug found, as well as a set of scales also found in the residence, he is charged with possession with the intent to distribute. He is being held in the Southwestern Regional Jail under a $150,000 bond. Well, coming up, there will be several ways for the Pike County area to help sick children. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele will give us the details on two of them. And several students received awards from Pike County School Board last week. We'll tell you about them in two minutes. The newly opened Kentucky State Police Training Academy in Frankfurt opened its doors to the first class yesterday. 64 cadets reported to the facility were greeted by a day full of physical fitness tests. The class has uh, cadets from 44 communities in Kentucky as well as four other states. Inez, Pikeville, Pippa Passes and Topmost all have representatives in the class and Prestonsburg has three. The class will now spend the next 23 weeks in training. Graduation is scheduled for October 30th. Well, members of the community rallied together this weekend to support Hillbilly Christmas in July, which benefits the Shriners Hospital for Children in Lexington. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele attended the weekend events and brings us this report. Two events were held this weekend to support Hillbilly Christmas in July. Hillbilly Christmas in July is a nonprofit organization that raises money to benefit the Shriners Hospital for Children in Lexington. Chairman Jimmy Kinney says community members need to participate in events that honor Hillbilly Christmas in July because many children in Pike County benefit from these events. We have a lot of kids in this area that go to that hospital. Matter of fact, just in Pike County, there's uh, a little over 400 active kids, and just in surrounding counties, there's 1,100 active patients at the Shriners Hospital. And anything you can do to help these kids, that's what we need to do, and that's what we're for. The first event held this weekend to support Hillbilly Christmas in July was the Run Hog Wild 5K 10K Trail Run at Bob Amos Park in Pikeville. Race Director Shaleber Bartley says it was a lot of fun for a good cause. Run Hog Wild, it's our second year. We've had 226 runners. We had a 5K and a 10K trail run today. Everybody shows up, we've had a good time, and we've raised about $4,000 for Hibley Christmas in July. The second event held was the first ever Thacker Memorial Ride for Life at the Annie E. Young Cemetery in Pike County. President Larry Thacker says the event takes the participants' minds off of losing a loved one. It's just a way we felt we could positive, we could make something positive out of a bad occasion. And so that was our way of, of memory of our children. And uh, so we wanted to do something positive for the community. So we're trying to uh, think of good, clean fun to have today. We're doing the barbecue. We've got a motorcycle ride. And just a good time. Uh, get everybody in good spirits. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shelby Steele. At the Pike County School Board meeting last week, awards were presented to some students for their success and participation in the Student Technology Leadership Program Showcase and other achievements. 
All 14 area schools were represented with 24 showcase entries. Some students went on to the state level two and three competition. Southside Elementary School received a trophy for being best in the state for their entry. We had quite a few awards tonight. We uh, had uh, some from the Shelby Valley High School area. We had some kids in the business program, the career and technical education program there that we uh, gave awards to. We had our Governor Scholars, which is really a big group of uh, kids that we're really proud of. Uh, that's a very competitive sort of uh, endeavor. But any of those extracurriculars that our kids uh, are involved in, it just adds a new dimension to the whole educational program. Uh, they learn so much. Along with the STLP awards, Governor Scholar certificates were given out and the Johns Creek Elementary cheerleading squad was honored for winning a championship in Tennessee. Well, coming up, Andrew Joyce will fill us in on all of the latest from the 15th region baseball and softball tournaments going on today in Prestonsburg. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will tell us what to expect from the weather as we return to work tomorrow. We'll be back in two minutes. Well, it's been an absolutely beautiful Memorial Day weekend. It has starting to notice some few changes across the region. I have a couple of showers popping up this evening across parts of the region. Doppler radar showing those very few and far between, but that is a sign of things to come here over the next couple of days. We have one shower, actually two showers now, in Buchanan County and Southwest Virginia. One here moving into Mingo and uh, extreme southern parts of Mingo and McDowell counties and another just to the north of Paintsville. But we do have more showers and storms definitely on the way over the next several days. I'll show you the uh, seven day forecast here in just a second. Notice the rain, uh, not so nice of a day from Bowling Green, Evansville to Lexington, more in a way a cloud cover and those showers. But as Gary mentioned, across eastern Kentucky, southwest Virginia, western West Virginia, you could not have asked for a better week and we've had temperatures in the low to mid 80s today a little warmer than that with plenty of sunshine 84 in Pikeville 85 in Williamson we have 83 in Inez 83 Prestonsburg 84 Paintsville 80 in Dorton 84 Whitesburg again absolutely beautiful day across the region now as far as the almanac is concerned the official high at the National Weather Service office in Jackson went down 84 degrees the overnight low 64 back above average for a change compared to last week. The record close, but not, not so much. 88 set back in 1991. No rain officially in Jackson. Still about uh, two, almost three inches below average for the rainfall this month and uh, still about four and a half inches above average as far as the year is concerned. That will be changing though. We do have a lot of rain developing across parts of the uh, southern parts of the country from Dallas to Oklahoma City. You see all those red boxes, tornado watches in effect, several tornado warnings in effect at this time as well. Uh, we do have the chance of severe weather as we make our way into the day tomorrow, even across our region. The uh, Storm Prediction Center has most of the Commonwealth of Kentucky in the slight risk category stretching from Cincinnati down to Lexington and Nashville. Across our region, just that marginal threat, but we definitely will have to keep a close eye on the radar as we make our way into the day tomorrow. The main threat will be the damaging winds across the region. So that's something I'll keep you up to date with the latest on over the next little bit. All right, the pollen count sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza in Pikeville. Not much change in the pollen count. 7.9 tomorrow and Wednesday, back to eight on Thursday. But things will begin to change, I think, as we head closer into the weekend. Notice this seven day forecast, man oh man, 70% chance of rain tomorrow and Wednesday, 50% Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 60% chance of rain Sunday into Monday. Temperatures each and every day in the low to mid 80s, mm. but we just cannot get rid of those daily showers and storms starting tomorrow. But we need but some we, rain. We do need the rain and yeah. we can't complain after the three day weekend we just <laughs> had. Right. I mean, it's hard to complain. That's right, Lathan, thank you very much. And we'll be back with sports in two minutes.
Well, Andrew, 15th Region Action began throughout the area. It did indeed. Uh, <laughs> big Memorial Day, of course, mm -hmm. lots of celebrations going on. High school baseball and softball, that's the tradition. Memorial Day gets it started. Right. Historically, the 15th Region Baseball and Softball Tournament celebrate Memorial Day with a full slate of first round action. The scene, Stonecrest, Prestonsburg Sports Park. Four baseball games, four softball games, each team playing for a trip to the state tournament. In baseball action earlier in the opening game of the day, Lawrence County facing Eastridge. Let's go to the field. Bottom of the six, Lawrence County up 4 nothing. Eastridge, Dalton Smith hits a shot to center field. He'll try to spark a rally, but that one's not deep enough to get it done. Zach Kazee will ground past the Eastridge second baseman with this dribbler. And that brings in another run for the Bulldogs. Bulldog starter Eric Salyers goes the different distance for the five hit shutout win. Lawrence County 5-0 over Eastridge. While Lawrence had just four hits, they were aided by four Warrior errors. In game two of the day earlier, 57th District champ Paintsville facing Allen Central in the regional tournament. The action started early in this one. In the final game of the morning session, Paintsville taking on the Rebels. Bottom of the first will go to the field. Paintsville's Kent Phelps will start things off for the Tigers with this triple to right center, just out of the reach of the diving attempt. Ben Daniels brings in Phelps with a shallow hit to left field. And the Tigers on top early. Matthew Miller will hit a grounder past the second baseman into right field, bringing in Daniels for another run. Paintsville gets the early lead. And then Cash Daniel will hit this shot over the left field fence. That's deep enough, and that's a solo home run. Paintsville moves on to the semifinals with a 7-0 win over the Rebels. Ben Daniels, Matt Miller, and Cash Daniel each with two hits. Ken Phelps got the win on the mound for the Tigers. Game three of the day. Now underway, we have an update from Prestonsburg. Middle of the fifth inning, Johnson Central leads Pikeville 4-3. And the finale set for 7.30 tonight. Belfry will face Prestonsburg. Semifinal number one is set for tomorrow at 6. Lawrence County meets Paintsville. And sem semifinal number two will feature the Pikeville Johnson Central winner taking on the winner of Belfry Prestonsburg. And in 15th Region softball first round action earlier, Johnson Central taking on Lawrence County. It was a beautiful start with lots of sun on the diamonds at Prestonsburg Sports Park. Top of the seventh inning, two outs tied at one apiece. Micah Ward will hit this one right down the third base line for the Lady Eagles. Johnson Central takes a one-run lead. Rochelle Fairchild will come to the plate, hits a grounder to short. That's through the wickets, and that's another run and an RBI for Fairchild. Johnson Central. In the seventh, rallying, Shelby Cantrell will hit a blooper right over third base for an RBI. Johnson Central goes on to get the win, 4-1 against Lawrence County. This one was a pitcher's duel tied at one in the seventh when the ladies' Eagles scored three unearned runs with two outs in the seventh. Johnson Central wins it. McKaylin Pierce was the winning pitcher, allowing just one run on three hits with seven strikeouts. Rebecca Fairchild doubled home the eventual game winner. In game two, saw Pikeville facing South Floyd. Top of the first will go to the action. One nothing, Pikeville with one out, bases loaded. Cassidy Lowe will hit one through the left fielder's glove. That's an error on the left fielder. That advances a runner to third, give her a double. Pikeville up three nothing. Lindsey Magnamy at the plate. Cameron Sloan almost picked off, but the bad throw allows her to advance across the plate and advances low. South Floyd will only score twice in the first score from Leanne Hall's RBI as she hits a grounder to second. Lady Panthers banged out 10 hits, took advantage of 11 Lady Raider errors. Pikeville wins it 20 to two. Savannah Nunemaker had three hits and Megan Cochran was the winning pitcher, allowing two runs on two hits. The Lady Panthers will face Johnson Central tomorrow night at 6 in the semifinals. 
And the final fir two first round softball games include McGoffin County versus the Pike Central Ladies and the Lady Hornets advance earlier with a 9 nothing win over the Lady Hawks. And in the nightcap underway now, the Eastridge Lady Warriors battling Betsy Lane's Lady Bobcats. That winner will face McGoffin County in softball semifinal action tomorrow evening at 8. And don't look now. The Cincinnati Reds have lost nine straight, falling today 5-4 to the Colorado Rockies. Mm. Got a feeling someone may lose a job soon there. Sounds that way. Thank you very much, Andrew. And we'll be back in two minutes. Some showers moving into the area. Could see a few of those overnight tonight. A better chance tomorrow, maybe even a round of severe weather. That's something to watch for tomorrow. Temperatures in the mid 80s and then a daily threat of showers and storms over the next seven days. Temperatures remaining in the low mm -hmm. to mid 80s. Okay, thank you very much, Lathan. And the regional action continues as we speak. That's even. right. <laughs> Wrapping up the first round this evening, of course, semifinals for both baseball and softball. Tomorrow we'll be there, have highlights, and keep you up to date with all the action. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Andrew. And that will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can also follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and Twitter. We leave you tonight with scenes from the Russell Fork. Good night and thanks for watching.